and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys after such an important win against Porto in the Champions League which has now secured our place in the knockout stages and today we're going to be looking back on that performance from the team and understanding really what we can learn from it now and most importantly ahead of big games to come what can we use from that to move forward together focusing on the big question of a Barca improving are we seeing signs here that are more positive right now? We're going to be discussing all of that and much more today. It's coming up for you, so let's do it. Because after such a big win for Barca, it is cause for celebration. And today's video is coming to you courtesy of Manscaped, who are giving you guys the perfect opportunity to wrap up your Christmas shopping right here and right now. And I want to introduce to you the Lawnmower 5.0. So this is the all new, all improved body trimmer and it is complete now with two interchangeable heads there, a trimmer blade and a foil blade and both of those have skin safe technology. It also comes complete with an LED spotlight, it's waterproof as well and guys, it has a special travel lock on it there so that it doesn't start to make some kind of strange noises when it's inside of your luggage. That can be a little bit embarrassing but I think it is a fantastic gift there. Whether it's a dad, an uncle, a brother, a friend, or maybe you just want to actually buy a gift for yourself. You know, you've got to love yourself. That's really important too. And you have to look after yourself. And Manscaped basically help you do that there. There is so much to choose from over on their website. So many different products. So many useful tools there that I'm sure you guys can make the most of. And if you follow the link in the description down below today, that will actually take you straight over to Manscaped.com. And that will actually select the best discount for you. It might be 20%, it could even be 25% there on the discount. There's lots of offers flying around right now, and I'm sure that you guys can pick something out. I really, really appreciate the support from you and from Manscaped too. But indeed, guys, if we do indeed kick off now by talking about the goalkeeper. I want to start in goal with Iñaki Pena. Looking back on yesterday, considering this is somebody who hasn't played at all basically this season, apart from last weekend, he wouldn't have expected to be involved in a game like this. Such high pressure, such a big, big moment for him. And I have to say, he dealt with it brilliantly. I think Iñaki Pena here deserves a lot of credit for the way that he performed. He made four saves in total against Porto. I thought he looked very calm, very assured whenever the ball was in and around him. And he couldn't really have done anything at all about the goal. Porto were peppering the goal with shots at that point and he wasn't really getting an awful lot of help and I thought it was nice after the game there and Yaki Pena basically saying that Marc-Andre Tastegen he's really helped me a lot in this role here especially during training today on match day there giving him some encouragement he also said before the game he wished me luck and just now he's congratulated me on my display and that's really nice to see there from Tastegen and that would really meant the world to Yaki Pena because he said right there you always have to give your all and you have to see the chances that become available to you. I arrived at La Masia at the age of 11, 12 years old, in order to be able to play and to be able to experience matches and nights like this. And that would have been an absolute dream come true for him out there last night. Although it is being reported right now that Ter Stegen, he will be back in time for Sunday against Atletico Madrid. It looks as though he is going to be able to return to the team. And that would, of course, be a really big boost and a big moment for us. But but I also think Pena has really done himself no harm at all here. He's handled himself well. He's stepped up where needed. And especially for his future in the game, that's vital for him. But if we move on now to defence, and I want to say, Captain Ronald Araujo, he was wonderful there in our back line. I think in a game like this, guys, there is absolutely nobody in the world that I would want more than him to be commanding my defence. He is such a leader. He is such a calming influence there. He's always there when you need him most. Araujo will just appear. And there have been a few rumours in the media today linking Bayern Munich with Araujo. Apparently there, Tuchel is a big fan of him. But let me tell you right now, that ain't happening. Barca have no intention of selling him. That is not something that is even on their mind at all. And obviously Araujo, we know, he absolutely loves it at the club. He really does play for the badge every time he steps onto the field. And Fabrizio Romano today actually has said that Barca plan on offering Araujo a new contract very, very imminently. So there's no need to even go 
going to no need to even think about the rumours linking Araujo away from the club right now. But I also want to talk, though, about Jules Koundé. Because even after the game yesterday there, guys, he came out in the media, he said he's very happy for the win, of course, very happy for the team. But he did say again, I'm really happy to be playing as a centre-back. That is the position that I feel most comfortable in. And of course, it's not the first time that we've heard that from Koundé. He regularly says, you know, that's where I want to be playing and not at right back. But as we said in the review, I did think he looked shaky last night. And I did think there was a few mistakes in there that could have really led to bad moments for us. Could have led to big, big errors there in front of goal. And they have started to just creep in over these past few weeks. And that was even after a great start to the season from him. And I'm sorry, guys, but the very last defender that I would move away from his best position, it wouldn't actually be Kunde. It would be Araujo. I don't think here that it's fair. I don't think that it's right, actually, that we're moving Araujo away from centre-back just so that Kunde can play there. I really, really don't. Araujo, for me, is a top, top, top centre-back, and he has to play there. No matter what, nobody should be moving for him. And I think Kunde has to really battle it out with the other players around him, then, to be involved in that centre-back pairing. Because it's not just him, either, that's fighting for that place right now. Because I also want to talk about Andreas Christensen. He, of course, wasn't involved last night. Inigo Martinez was preferred. And I'm just wondering right now, has Christensen started to fall down the peck in order? Because obviously you think about last season, how good Christensen was, how consistent he was there in his performances. And I think this season, not really much has changed. But Inigo has come in and you have to say, he has been wonderful. You know, the way that he's adapted to this team, the way that he also helps us in the build-up too, he is absolutely incredible there. The way that he's actually overcome a tough start that it was when he first arrived in the summer. Inigo Martinez has been brilliant, but there have been a few rumours in the media though that Christensen has sort of been dealing with a few injury problems this season. Also a few problems there that maybe wouldn't prevent him playing, but playing actually a lot of games. You know, he might be playing through the pain at times, and it was also interesting to see this morning that Deco actually met with Christensen's agent at the club, and that was really interesting to see what that meeting may or may not have been about their playing time, maybe other topics, but I actually think in general, guys, it's a nice problem that Xavi has here. Whether we're talking about Christensen not playing, whether we're talking about Kunde at centre-back, we have so many good options, so many incredible players there, all vying for two or three spaces. That's what you want as a coach, and that means right now that finally, at centre-back, We've got incredible depth, which I think is very interesting because then we move on to the fullback areas whereby we've got so many great centre-backs, but at fullback we are quite light right now. And I thought it was interesting to see the left-back situation to Alejandro Balde, another player that wasn't involved from the start and has also been suffering quite a tricky season. You know, he hasn't been able to find the same consistency that we saw from him last season, especially there, the effectiveness in the final third. And of course, Cancelo last night playing at left-back, you can't really deny that was a great choice and Xavi there to actually open him up to sort of use him as the free man. A lot of the time there when we were in possession of the ball, it was Cancelo who was finding the pockets of space and was really hurting Porto, dominating on that left-hand side. Cancelo, as we said, was incredible. But what does this mean for Balde now? Because as good as Cancelo was there, are we going to see Balde sort of benched more consistently because Cancelo is going to be on the left more often? Was it a one-off? And I would also just throw it out there, guys. Is it completely crazy of me to suggest that could we at some stage technically experiment with Balde on the right? Because actually we have seen him play at right back on a few occasions last season. I actually thought Balde was pretty decent when he played over on that side. And is it crazy to sort of suggest that in certain games... We have both fullbacks there being inverted, both of them having the ability to cut in actually on their stronger side. I mean, it sounds very strange, but Cancelo is so good on the left. You know, you saw him yesterday, how comfortable he is actually when he cuts in on the right, how much danger that he was able to create. And I'm just wondering how best we can use this here, how we can actually utilise Cancelo and Balde together. So far this season, we struggle to do that, but are the answers there somewhere? And how is Balde going to get back in this team and get back really to the level? we were seeing from him just last season because then there's the midfield and I actually think guys in terms of our midfield trio in terms of the kind of setup of the team I think there's still a lot more that we need to do in terms of creativity through the middle there of the field I think there's more that we can do in terms of creating chances for our attacking players and I think in terms of control as well we need to be able to dominate more periods in games actually to pen our opponents in there and be able to sustain the pressure and I think the midfield is very very key with that but in terms in terms of effort in yesterday's game, 
You can't fault them. You cannot say a word there about the way that midfield really covered the ground yesterday. And they had to. Absolutely incredible from all three of them. I mean, look at the shift that Pedri put in. What effort there. He covered every single blade of grass. And especially given that he's been out for a long time with injury, of course, this season. To come back in now and to be able to do that. And Laporta said it actually after the game. Pedri ran 13 kilometres. And he was almost acting as Gavi out there. And Laporta said as well that Frankie de Jong, with him, we are unbeatable. And I think those are really big words and accurate words, actually, from Laporta there in terms of our play with Frankie de Jong. With him, we look like a different team. You feel as though every single player out there now feels more comfortable because Frankie is right there alongside them. And I think to just illustrate that point, you only have to look at what Cancelo said about Frankie de Jong after the game there. He absolutely showered him in praise because he said all of my teammates played a great game. But I want to say something about Frankie de Jong. He said he is one of the best players I have ever seen in that position. He said whenever he plays, he makes a tremendous difference to the team and we are so happy to have him back. And just remember here, in Cancelo, he's played a lot of top teams around a lot of absolutely phenomenal players in midfield there and yet he is saying Frankie is one of the best he has ever seen. That is a huge word and accurate for the impact that he has right now on this Barca side. Which then leaves us with the attack. Because actually, guys, I would say yesterday, you know, for the first time maybe several games, we actually created a lot of chances. We had a good amount of opportunities in front of goal. We put pressure on Porto. We were fizzing shots in and around the area there. And once again, we're talking about taking them. It's about efficiency. It's about being clinical in front of goal and making the most of those chances and especially making the right decision at the right time too. Because he spoke in the match review about Robert Lewandowski. I don't want to pile in on him too much, but I really did think yesterday that he just looked off the pace. He didn't really look ready for this kind of game. You know, the high tempo, the high intensity, the ball at times again, bouncing off him, a loose touch here and there, wasn't helping in our play, and he wasn't really getting inside of the box where you want him. But I do accept as well, guys, there were plenty of opportunities in this game whereby he could have maybe been picked out. Maybe he did take up a better position, and at times it was Rafinha maybe that was taking on the shot himself, or you know, not really seeing the pass, not making the pass at the right time. So that's what I mean. In the final third here, there's two things. Make the right decision, that's important, and then make the clinical one. Make sure that we're making the most of our opportunities, which again, we didn't really do yesterday, because even Chao Felix, I thought he was very, very good on the day. He took up some excellent positions. I think he was actually somebody who was making the right runs. He was arriving in the box, in the right area, where you wanted him, but again, he could have left the game with a hat-trick. I mean, he had the winning goal. We're very, very thankful for that. And it was a brilliant finish that he pulled off. But he could have had a hat-trick. He is good enough to be able to be doing that in games like this. He was in the right positions. And it all comes down to application in the end. And I think these are all things that we need to just fit together, to sort of meet together, for everything to fall our way. And if we can get that, we may be looking at a more dangerous team. We may be looking at a team that can put games beyond doubt that's what we're striving for, and that's what we need from all of our attacking players, because as I said yesterday, Cancelo's finish from a fullback was one of the most clinical pieces of play we've seen in weeks. However, does this mean that our problems are solved? Does this victory over Porto here, and the significance of it, does that suddenly mean now things are okay? You know, Barca are feeling good, they're looking good, everything is going to be all right. Well, let's listen first of all to Chavi, because he said problems at Barca they're never solved. He said, I do feel satisfaction rather than feeling liberated today because I wasn't feeling cornered. The feeling is one of joy and tranquility. It's a day to congratulate the club and the team because this is the process of the project there. So Chavi, I think, feeling very happy that we did get the job done. But obviously, even he knows that it doesn't mean everything is solved overnight because he even went on to say there are still many things that we need to improve. So we must continue to be humble. He said, because even today... We've given away too much tonight. We gave away too much to Porto. But he said we also had a great team in front of us. My feeling is that we played a very good game against a great team. And I think I agree there with that. We 
did give Porto opportunities, and I also think against an even better team than Porto, we would have again been in big trouble. That is something we have to bear in mind. That's why we have to keep improving. But Chaffee said there, I hope that we can continue where we left off during the second half. And not only in terms of the result that we've got, but also in our play, I hope this is a turning point because this is the Barca that I want. And I personally believe here, guys, that we have seen improvement. There is no doubt there that Porto game and the way we were able to ramp up the pressure, that's more of what we want to see because we want to see a team here that is able to take the game to our opponents and actually when we're in need of a goal, get one and then get another one and ideally get another one and another one again. We need to be able to do that and I think you also see yesterday after the game that Laporta clearly backs Xavi. He has clear faith in him there. He has clear confidence in him and he desperately wants him to succeed. We all do, but I just think we have to keep seeing these steps forward now. I think personally for me, guys, it's no good here winning this game, showing a few positive signs, showing a few signs here that we're heading in the right direction. But then on Sunday, if we fail to turn up, it's one step forward, two steps back. We cannot afford that to happen. What we need to do now is game by game, as we keep progressing, as we keep moving along in the season, we need to keep seeing that improvement. Keep that level as consistent as we can. Try and keep our players fit and available. I know that we can't control that, but hopefully we can. And then, maybe this is the start of a turning point. Maybe we can start to build some momentum. Maybe the confidence will come back, especially in our attacking players. And even as well, don't forget maybe, with the addition of Vito Roque adding more goals to this team, then we can start cooking. But only time will tell, because we have a big game coming up on Sunday, an even bigger test, I would say, at home against Atletico Madrid. And only in that game, really, will we truly find out whether Barca are on the right road, whether we are really improving, and whether we are ready to take that next big step. So please, guys, do let me know in the comments down below. Do you feel that Barca are improving? Do you feel as though this game here, such a significant moment in our season, qualifying there for the knockout stages, can it be a turning point? Can it be a catalyst here to get us back on the right track under Xavi? Do let me know all of your honest thoughts down below and everything you made of the game yesterday. Who stood out for you? What do you expect heading into that Atleti game? I will see you soon, of course. We'll be building up to that one because it is such a massive match. And I thank you indeed, guys, for all of your support. Big shout out today as well to Manscaped for their incredible help. I'll catch you soon with more videos to come, but until next time, as always, Vishka, El Barca. Uh -huh.